So uh, today we will go through the fundamentals of regression analysis. We will start with the simple linear regression analysis and then we will go further with the multiple linear regression models. And at the end we will go through some uh, important uh, points on the logistic regression analysis. In fact, the last part I will uh, just show you uh, a brief information and uh, I will try to start the next week with the applications in R because uh, the logistic regression, in fact, is uh, very, is one of the uh, re regression models very used when we have to deal with binary variables. But uh, uh, the, the applications in R or uh, in Python or other uh, uh, statistical softwares are, um, are more easy to, to understand this, uh, this methodology. Okay. Let's start with the learning objectives for this, uh, this part. So, we will use the regression analysis to predict the values of independent variables. So let me. Yeah. OK. Based on uh, an uh, independent variable, maybe some of you have already information or most of you have information regarding the linear regression, but we will go in some mathematical points here. But uh, of course, I want to. Um, to inform that uh, we will go through these uh, mathematical uh, notations and uh, uh, some uh, some information which is necessary, in fact, to better understand the linear regression model. But of course, starting from uh, next week when we will start uh, using R, I will show you uh, how the linear regression models, the, the simple and the multiple regression models are interpreted, so the outputs uh, are, are interpreted uh, from uh, from R, so it will be more easy to to work on it. Uh, we will see here the meaning of the regression coefficients, the linear regression coefficient, which are B0 and B1. Uh, and we will also see how to evaluate the assumption of regression analysis and how and uh, know what to do if the assumptions are violated. Uh, then we will make inferences about the slope and the correlation coefficient. OK. And uh, of course, after building an, a nice model, a good model for our observation, we will estimate the mean values and we, we will use it to predict uh, individual values. So to predict what will happen in a given, uh, for, for example, in a, a time regression model, we will predict what will happen in uh, a given time, a given moment, or uh, maybe if we have uh, other observations, we can uh, predict what the outcome of the dependent variable would be if we have a value of the independent variable. So let's start with again with the correlation uh, because remember in every project or in every work the first part is to understand your, your data is uh, the graphical part. So first anytime start by plotting your data. The first graphical uh, or it can be a box plot, a histogram, or a, um, a density plot, or a probability plot. So you can start with this, but when you go to the point of uh, understanding the correlation among the two variables, so the relationship among the two variables, then a scatter plot for discrete variables is the best graphical representation. So you can use a scatter plot to show the relationship between the two variables in a also in a linear regression model. And here, if we have a view of the scatter plot, then we can analyze the correlation coefficient. Uh, the mostly used here is the Pearson correlation coefficient, but there are other correlation coefficients. And um, of course, the correlation coefficient, you remember, is um, a measure which uh, uh, it, uh, takes values from minus one to one, and uh, it shows us if our variables are positively correlated or negatively correlated. And uh, OK, so uh, this uh, correlation coefficient, the Pearson correlation coefficient, is only concerned, in fact, with the strength of the linear relationship. But it is a nice start for the simple linear regression model. Let me show you here two outputs. Uh, these are very nice outputs. The one to the right is a simple correlation plot, which are, uh, both of the graphical views are obtained in R from uh, different packages. We will see them when we will uh, work in R. And um, so you can see that uh, the right one is, in fact, a nice 
colorful correlation plot, but the information here is not uh, um, is not a, a full information. So you you don't know. Maybe you know that uh, your variables are positively correlated or negatively correlated based on the color. So you can see here from zero to one, we have the blue color starting from the light and uh, to the dark color of blues. And uh, from zero to minus one, you see we have uh, the red color, which means that all the, the circles with uh, these red colors, light or um, dark colors are negatively correlated. And uh, this uh, graphical representation, in fact, also shows you based on the color and also based on the size of the circle. So, for example, you can see here this circle, uh, which is in fact uh, smaller than, for example, let's see this one here. It means that uh, in these two combinations, so for these two variables here from uh, HP and MP, MPG variables, these are negatively correlated with the correlation very close to minus one. But for this one here, so this one here, we have uh, the correlation among the two, between these two variables, WT and QSAC, which is a negative correlation value, but it is lower in value compared to the first one, so compared with this one here. Then if we move to the left, graphical representation, this is a very nice graphical representation for the correlation among, um, uh, here we have uh, six variables, so you can observe the graphics in the diagonal here. So here we have the histograms and the density plot for all the variables. So this is a graphical representation for each variable independently by the others from the others. So you can see here, uh, for example, if the distribution of the variables is uh, normal, dis uh, normal distribution or if it is not a normal distribution. So you can analyze this information from this uh, diagonal here. And of course, you can see uh, in the upper part of this di diagonal, you can see that we have values here. So in this part here, these values, in fact, are the correlation coefficients among two variables between between two variables. So uh, these uh, variables are paired. And uh, let's see, for example, this value here, which is approximately 0 0.89, it is the correlation coefficient between the disp variable here and down wt variable and in the symmetric view down of this di uh, diagonal so, so you can see that this scatter plot for these two variables in fact is this one here so you can see that is just put these two intersections and uh, you, know, you can see that uh, maybe here we can think of a linear, a linear relationship between these two variables. So uh, it is a positive linear relationship and um, a value of uh, 0 0.89 means that uh, we can consider it as a strong positive linear relationship. But let's see another value here. For example, this one here, this is uh, approximately 0 0.091. So it is very close to zero. And this is the correlation uh, between the QSEC variable and the DRAT variable here. And for these uh, two variables, the scatter plot is this one here. OK, so you can see from the scatter plot that uh, it is difficult to fit a linear, a linear model to these two variables. And of course, this is shown also in the value of the correlation um, coefficient. Then, uh, for example, let's see a negative correlation coefficient, maybe this one here, which is minus 0 0.85. It is the correlation coefficient among uh, uh, between uh, MPG variables, so this one and this variable here. And this graph here is the scatter plot between these two variables. So we can think that uh, we have a negative correlation, a strong negative correlation between these two variables. So. Um, here also you can understand that the disp variable is the epsilon variable, so this one here, and the independent variable or otherwise we call it as a explanatory variable is the MPG. Okay, so this one is X here. We will turn back uh, to this uh, correlation plot when we will work in R. So this was just a view to, to start how we analyze or how we start uh, the linear regression model uh, 
building model. Through some notation here, uh, what for uh, what uh, why we use our um, a regression analysis? So first we use we use these models to predict the values of a dependent variable, which was denoted by y or epsilon, uh, based on the value of at least one independent variable. So maybe if we went, if we have only one, we have x, or maybe if we have more, we denote it by x1, x2, and so on. Then the regression analysis is also used to explain the impact of changes uh, in an independent variables based on the dependent variables, okay? Um, just to remind you that uh, what a function is, it is a mathematical relationship which enables us to predict what values of one variable, for example, y, corresponds to a given value of another variable x here. In uh, the uh, regression analysis, we uh, refer to y or epsilon as the dependent variable, or otherwise we call it the response variable or sometimes we also uh, name it as a predicted variable. And then X is referred to as the independent variable or the explanatory variable, or maybe we can use the term of a predictor variable. Okay, <clears throat> sorry, when we use the, for example, the linear regression models, we can use it in the situation when um, we want to see how the parents high may influence their children's high or maybe when we want to estimate the price of the house depending on its surface, or maybe when we want to predict the unemployment level for different ages. So these are the dependent variable and these are the independent variable or the explanatory, explanatory, explanatory variable, sorry. Or maybe when we want to approximate the grades attained in a subject as a function of the number of study hours per week. or uh, sometimes to forecast the execution time of a program, so the time here, depending on the speed of the processor. So these are a few examples, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you know uh, many other examples where the linear regression model is used. So in the simple linear regression model, we have only one independent variable, which we denote it by X, and uh, the relationship between the independent variable x and the dependent variable y or epsilon is described by a linear function. That's why we call it a simple linear regression model because there are other uh, regression models um, in the literature of uh, the, the um, statistics. And uh, the changes in the dependent variable y are assumed to be related to the changes in the uh, independent variable x. Let's see some types of relationships. So uh, that's why I previously mentioned that at the first part of analyzing your data, plot your data and consider analyzing the, the relationship. If it is a linear, for example, so if you are in uh, this situation or in this situation, so maybe you can understand from the graph that this is a positive relation, linear relationship between the two variables. And in the second graph, it is a negative linear relationship between the two variables. Or maybe you can have a, a curved linear relationship. For example, this one here is um, a concave. OK, this is a concave linear uh, relationship. Or the second one maybe is uh, so uh, if you are in this situation, you have to do with the convex. Sorry, convex uh, linear relationship. Uh, okay, other uh, linear or other relationship may be, uh, for example, if uh, you can have a strong uh, linear relationship, which is uh, positive, for example, or which can be negative at the second as the second situation, or maybe you can see that uh, sometimes we have uh, you have a weak linear uh, relationship, so maybe you can be in this situation here or this situation here. And if you observe a weak linear relationship between your variables, um, in this situation, the linear regression, the simple linear regression model is not the appropriate model for your data. Or maybe you can, um, you can think to analyze other variables, for example, which you can uh, use as uh, explanatory variables for your epsilon, so for 
your um, dependent variable. OK, so if you are in this situation, start considering other uh, variables. Or maybe you can have no relationship at all. So this is another point where um, we advise you to, to start looking for other variables for your dependent variables. Uh, why? So uh, even if uh, this uh, relationship is similar to this uh, graphical view here, or even if it is uh, similar to this graphical view here, the second one, because if you observe in the second one, if X increase, you can see that the value of the dependent variable are not changing. So X cannot be an explanatory variable for your dependent variable uh, Y, OK? So let's go to the formula of the simple linear regression model. This is the basic formula, which means that for every observations, obs observation, so uh, that's why we use this I here, for every observation, so if we have uh, n uh, data, uh, I will move from 1 to n, we have this uh, linear relationship. When uh, this is the dependent variable, y, then we have the intercept, which is denoted by beta 0. Then we have the slope, which was denoted by beta 1. We have then the independent variable. And if you see here at, at the last part, but it is important, we have this random error term or uh, the random effect on our uh, fitting model. So let's see it graphically. Let's suppose these points here are our observations. So these are our individuals. And for each of these individual, we have a value of the explanatory variable X and a value of uh, the dependent variable or observed value uh, Y. And uh, if we try to fit a linear regression model to these uh, observations, this line here is the linear regression model. What is the random error? The random error is, in fact, this difference here. So it is the distance from the observed value and uh, to the fitted value of, uh, of Upsilon. So this is the fitted value of uh, this observation using the linear regression model or the estimated value. And this one here is the real or the observed value for uh, our individual. OK. So the intercept is this one here. So it is uh, the value when uh, x has values uh, equal to zero. So it is a value of the epsilon when x is equal to zero. And the slope is this one here. Um, so it's related to the angle. But uh, what can, how can we interpret the slope? In fact, um, at the first part, we can interpret the sign of the slope. So if it is positive, we have um, positive linear regression line, so uh, our regression model. And if it is negative, we have uh, negative uh, linear uh, correlation between uh, the two variables. These are some notations which we, which we use for the equation line in the regression model. So if we are in the population um, in the population parameters or uh, mathematical notation, you can see that we have to estimate these two parameters, exactly beta 1 and uh, beta 0 and beta 1 to build our and uh, how we do it, we use the sample statistics. So we use information from a sample and uh, we estimate the beta zero and we denote it by B zero. And we also estimate beta one and we denote it by B one. So this is the simple linear regression equation. So uh, this is the equation we use now after the estimation of these two parameters, B, B zero and B one. And uh, if you notice here, we put a hat uh, just to, to understand that uh, this is the estimated value of epsilon or otherwise the predicted value of uh, uh, our, obs uh, so our uh, observation. And xi here are, in fact, the real values. OK, so we have this information and we are using the linear regression model to predict how uh, to predict the value of the uh, the dependent variable, which is this one here. And how it is done? Of course, I'm not going through mathematical um, calculations, but I just want to mention that uh, we use the least square method 
which uh, to, to estimate B0 and B1. And this is one of the methods we use as well when we had to deal with uh, multiple regression model. And um, the least square method in, um, in the basic uh, use this information. Uh, it uses uh, the fact that we want to minimize the sum of the squared differences between the real value and the estimated value. So this one here is the formula we use to, uh, when we uh, work with a least square method. I'm not going through the formula, but uh, the, the main aim of this method is to minimize the sum of this, um, these errors here. So from the observations and uh, to the fitted value, which is this part here. Then if we use the least squared method, we get the formula for B0 and B1. Um, yeah, I'm going here. What are the formulas? We can use this formula here for the slope, B1, or uh, this one here for the intercept. But uh, maybe in some situation when you work uh, manually, maybe you can use this formula here to calculate the slope, B1, and uh, this one here to calculate the intercept. So if you observe carefully, we just need to know the sum of the values for uh, the X variable and the sum of the values for the Y variable or Y variable, and as well, the sum of squares for the x variable. So if we have this information, OK, and this one here, so the sum of the multiplied values between the x var uh, variable and y variable. So if we have these uh, three information, so these three sums, and uh, of course we know the number of the total observation, which is n, so we can use all this information and we can fit a simple linear regression model to our data. And... Uh, OK, maybe you can um, when you do the calculation manually, but I'm sure you are not going to do to do this calculation manually. So R or Python or another stati statistical software is doing it for you because these are uh, the basic models uh, we use in statistics and they are already uh, they have already the functions in uh, in the software. Uh, so um, just remember, for example, that uh, B0 can be uh, estimated by using the average value of x and uh, y and also as well using the estimated value for uh, b1 so for the slope let's see an example so let's suppose uh, you are a real estate agent who wish to ex examine the relationship between the selling price of a home and its size so we have the price here and we have the size which is measured in square feet let's suppose we have 10 houses selected from from the population and um, in our situation because we want to observe the relationship between the selling price it means that uh, uh, the dependent variable here is the the price which is measured in thousand of dollars and um, we want to um, to understand how the price is related with the size of the homes so in this situation, the independent variable, which is denoted by X, is the surface of these uh, houses. So uh, it is uh, measured in square feet in this situation. So let's suppose these are the data. We have uh, 10 observations, so starting from 1 to up to 10. So it means that uh, for the first uh, um, observation or the first house, we have this price and this uh, surface in square feet. And for the second one, we go, uh, we have this price and this uh, surface in square feet and so on. So first we start by plotting a scatter plot. So uh, we can observe here even that we have, uh, um, I will, uh, for example, in my opinion, uh, it is better to have um, more than 10 observations to try to build a model on your data because 10 is uh, in fact uh, a low number, but in this situation we can just use it uh, for uh, explanatory uh, purposes. So just to explain how it works, the linear regression model. So you can observe here that uh, I'm changing the color maybe to red, okay. So you can observe here that uh, this uh, scatter plot has uh, maybe a positive correlation. So you can try using your, your eye to fit here a regression line, which can be this one. So maybe it can be as well this one, or uh, maybe someone can think about another line. So that's why we use uh, the least uh, square method to estimate the best from this uh, 
linear um, uh, linear model which best fit our data. But the most important thing here is the fact that uh, all of us believe that there is a positive correlation between the house price and the square feet. So I don't believe there is someone um, from you that uh, believes that uh, here we have to deal with a negative correlation or maybe we do not have correlations at all. So I think it is very clear uh, that we have a positive uh, correlation here. So starting from the scatter plot, which is the first statistic tools to understand the correlation between uh, two variables, then we can use uh, the, the formulas to estimate the slope and the intercept. So using the formula, we can estimate the slope to be at this value, approximately 0 0.11. And uh, if uh, using the uh, so, so using again the the formulas, we can estimate the intercept, which is uh, something um, ninety eight point two hundred forty eight dollars in thousand dollars. So it is important to read all the three numbers uh, digits uh, um, behind the decimal uh, point. Then this one is our simple linear regression model. So the high the house prices can be predicted using this formula here. So for a given value of uh, the surface in square feet, we can predict the, the price of the house. OK. So um, what does it mean that uh, the, so the interpretation of the, the, the intercept? Uh, B0, in fact, is the estimated average value of epsilon when the value of x is equal to 0. So for value of x equal to 0, we obtain B0. But for example, in this situation, it is uh, not um, easy to, to explain it because uh, in this situation, we can say that uh, for a surface of a, of a house equal to 0, so we don't have a house at all, then the, the price of the house would be something uh, uh, in thousand dollars, it means 98 approximately, so $98,000, which is uh, which is not, uh, in fact, an, uh, a situation we, where we can interpret uh, the, uh, the, the, the intersect. OK. Uh, then B1 is, in fact, more easy to be interpreted because in this situation, B1, or in other situation, uh, B1 estimates the change in the average value of epsilon as a result of one unit increase in X. So for example, here, um, if we increase um, the, the surface of the house by one unit, it means that uh, the, the price would uh, increase on average by $190, and nine, $109 approximately, okay, for one square foot increase of the, of the surface of the houses. So this is a simple example. I'm not going through calculations, but just to show you how this uh, parameter estimation in the linear, simple linear regression model is used. So if you remember from the previous formula, we just need to know the sum here for axis, the sum for epsilon, the sum for the um, uh, x square and uh, epsilon square, and the, the sum of the multiplication here of x and epsilon. So if we have all this information for these two variables, then we can use it to our formula and we can estimate B0 and B1. For example, here B0 is equal to 0 0.7 and B1 is equal, sorry, B1 is equal to 0 0.7 approximately and B0 is equal to minus 0 0.1. So uh, here, for example, we can interpret the sign of B1, which is a positive sign. And um, maybe uh, based on the situation, so the, the nature of our data, Maybe this B0 here has an interpretation, but in most of the cases, it is difficult to interpret it. For example, here, if we suppose that uh, uh, we are, we are uh, considering the relation between the production and the consumption, X, in this situation, the slope B1 was equal to 0 0.7. So it means that uh, we, expect, uh, to, we expect the production to increase by 0 0.7 for each one unit increase in the consumption. And uh, regarding the intercept B0, because here we have an intercept equal to minus uh, 0 0.1, it means that uh, for a consumption level equal to 0, we have a production of minus 0 0.1, which is in fact uh, difficult to explain. 
because in this situation we know that the production is always positive. So there are some situations when uh, uh, we we need to carefully uh, look at uh, at the model. So for which values of the x variable the model can can be used. Let's see some types of uh, relation. So maybe when you plot your data, you can be in the situation when you have a deterministic model. So it means that uh, you have um, a perfectly line between uh, the X values and the Epsilon values. For example, uh, this is the formula for, um, um, so if we have uh, the, the uh, degrees in Celsius, we can, um, we can predict the values in degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So here, this is the formula and this is a deterministic model because for each value of uh, X, the degrees in Celsius, we have a given value of uh, degrees in Fahrenheit, which is measured as uh, Y or Y. But we can have, we can be in the situation when we can have a non deterministic model, which means that our dependent variable Y can be a function of the variable X plus uh, random variable, so it is a kind of uh, a known perturbation variable, you here. So this can be a situation, you can see that we are not in the deterministic model, so for a given value, for example, let's see here of 21 of X, you can see that can be two values of uh, the dependent variables, Epsilon here, which is the cost, okay? Other types of relation can be a linear relation. So in this situation, we are uh, in the simple linear regression model. So it can be a positive relationship or a negative relationship. And we can also be in the situation when we have a uh, non-linear relationship. For example, here we can have a, logar a logarithmic uh, function. So the values of the dependent, of the dependent uh, variables are explained by the logarithmic of the independent variable or exploratory variables. Or maybe you can have, for example, a quadratic uh, function here or uh, even an exponential model. So these are the situation when you have to deal with nonlinear models. And believe me, for example, in economy, maybe you have seen that most of the models are, uh, are built based on the logarithmic uh, value of, of a given va variable. Or maybe we can have, of course, uh, we can be in a situation when we have absence of relation. So this is the situation when we do we do not see by eye, and in fact, even by statistical tests, we mm, we can um, achieve at the conclusion that we don't have a relationship between these two variables, x and y. And uh, okay, let's go through this um, diagram here. Why we use uh, this diagram? This diagram is a kind of um, a helpful di helpful diagram to um, to think before using the the model, the regression equation which you have previously estimated. So first, try to respond to this question. For example, if the regression line which you have graphed in the scatter plot shows that the line fits the points well, then for you it's okay. So we are going at this side. Then. If R, which is the determination coefficient, or uh, okay, R here is uh, the correlation coefficient. If it indicates that there is a linear correlation, it may be positive or negative, then you go to the left side here. Or if the prediction is not much beyond the scope of the available sample data, so I will uh, go through this point in the later slide. Uh, here then, okay, you go to the left side. So if all of these questions are yes, so you have all this, uh, you are in all this situation, then yes, your regression equation is a good model to be used. And then you can use it for prediction purposes and uh, your um, prediction can be very accurate. But if the response of this question are no, then your regression model is not a good model to, to be used for prediction purposes. So you just have to go back and to analyze maybe the, the relationship, maybe it is not a linear relationship, or uh, to analyze better the, the co correlation coefficient and, uh, and other, other situations, maybe in the graphical view or um, using some uh, statistical test. Let's go back to our example. So we can use the linear regression model to obtain predictions for our dependent variable. How we obtain predictions? If 
we have a given value of x, so for the from the independent variable or otherwise we call it explanatory variable, then we just put this value to the model here and then we can predict in this situation the price, the house prices. So if we have um, a house with a, uh, a surface of 2000 square feet, then we can predict that the price for this house would be something because we are in thousand dollars here would be uh, approximately three hundred and seventy thousand and eighty uh, hundred and fifty dollars so of course the predictions are uh, are estimates okay we we don't uh, in most of the times we are not uh, sure that this value would be so we have here again that uh, that error term of uh, plus and minus uh, a given value we will see it later then what are the outliers and the influential points? So um, when we build this um, scatter plot of our observation, there uh, we can observe outliers. In fact, uh, these outliers are uh, observations which uh, lie far away from the other data points, and we can all as well have influential points which are in fact, in fact, uh, observations or points. Uh, that are strongly affect uh, that that strongly affect the graph of the regression line. So let's suppose here you have this scatter plot between your variables x and y, and let's suppose you have these uh, points here. So these observations, and as well we have let's suppose an observation here and another one here. So if we fit a linear regression line to this data, maybe um, the linear regression line would be this one. And if we remove this value, then the linear regression line is this one here. So I'm putting one and two after removing this uh, observation here. So this one here is called an influential point because if we remove this value from our data, uh, then our regression line changes from this one to this one. And this one here is called then an outlier. We can see that uh, how to deal with outliers. We will see um, next week because uh, Maybe uh, you you are thinking that uh, if we have these outliers, then uh, we can just uh, take them away. So uh, we, we do not consider them and maybe we can try to fit our model on the other part of the set of, of the sample. But uh, an outliers may be an important observation in your data. So uh, there are some transformation we can do with the outliers. So maybe just to fit these values in this set of, uh, of points here. And uh, we will see. We will see some transformation next, next week. OK. That is uh, another advice. Uh, another advice in the simple linear regression model is to do not try to extrapolate beyond the range of the observed values of X. For example, here we can see that our houses are, uh, the surface of our houses is from 1,000 up to 2,500 uh, square feet. So if we want to predict the price, for example, let's say uh, the price uh, for um, a house uh, with uh, 2000 square feet, so this one here, we can use it because we are um, in the interpolation range here. Uh, as well, if you we want to predict a value here for a given square feet uh, surface, we can uh, as well uh, forecast or predict it or estimate it based on this linear regression model. But if you want, for example, uh, to forecast here, uh, maybe our uh, prediction or our forecasting value for the house price is not accurate. So this is one of the advices. Try to stay. Maybe you can use um, an error term here. So just to, to go plus uh, one a, a given term epsilon. So an error to the left, to the right, sorry, of uh, the minimum and the maximum absurd value you have and uh, minus this epsilon to the left. So you can um, think to, to use your model in, uh, in this interval. OK. Uh, what are the residuals? So uh, the residuals are another part, uh, another important part of the fitting uh, accuracy of the model. So uh, a residual, in fact, is the difference between the observation, so the observed value and the predicted value or the estimated value. So is this difference here? we can have positive values of the residuals or negative values. So we have positive values of the residuals if the residuals, if the points, sorry, are above the linear regression line. And we can we have 
uh, negative values of the residuals if the points are below this regression line here. OK. Uh, then uh, what are the measures of variation? The simple re linear regression model. Just remember from the previous lesson that we have talked about uh, a total variation and two other uh, variations. So here we will talk about the total uh, variation or deviation of the points which is the vertical distance between the observation and the, the mean of the variable here. We have the explained deviation or variation, which is the vertical distance between the fitted value and the mean of the observation. And we have this unexplained deviation, which is the vertical distance between the observation and the fitted values. So let, let me show you this formula here. So we have the total variation which is the total sum of squares, this one here, and it is the sum of the regression sum of squares, R here stands for regression, plus the error sum of square, E here stands for error, and uh, how all of these are calculated. So you can see that the SST is calculated using this formula here. So we just um, subtract to the observation the mean of the observation and we calculate the, the square of this difference and then we sum it up and for the regression part we you see here that we calculate the difference of the fitted values from the model uh, we have obtained of uh, the linear regression model with the mean of the observation and then we square it and then sum it up and uh, we can use uh, and as well the error sum of squares is the difference between the observations with the fitted values. That's why we here have the, the error or uh, otherwise the residuals between the real observation and the fitted observation. OK, we'll use these uh, three measurements as ST. Uh, this three measure, we will use it when we will build an ANOVA table for the significance of the model. I will show you to you later. And here is the graphical view to better understand what is uh, SST so you can see that uh, if we have this observation here, SST is the difference or the distance of this um, value of observed value of uh, the dependent variable epsilon with the mean of all the variables. So this distance here and then uh, the unexplained deviation. In fact, let's start with the explained deviation or the regression deviation is this uh, difference here. So you can see from uh, the the fitted value, sorry, this one here. So from the fitted value here up to the mean of the observation. So this one, this difference here is the explained deviation. So the part that the linear regression model explains. And then we have this unexplained deviation here, which is the error sum of squares. And in fact, is this part here. So the part which is not explained by the, the linear regression model here. OK. So. Uh, Let's go here to another uh, definition and another measurement which will help us to understand which is the best model for our data or the better one um, among many models. The coefficient of determination, in fact, is denoted by R square. It is uh, calculated using this formula here and uh, it explains, in fact, um, it is used to explain the variation. Uh, so how, how ma uh, what part of the data are explained by the linear regression or the model you are using? So what a part of the variation is explained from the dependent uh, from the independent variable? So this is uh, the formula we use here the SSR. So the sum of squares from the regression model and uh, divided by the total sum of squares. And of course, because the total sum of, of squares is uh, greater than the regression sum of, uh, sum of squares, then this, um, this value is between 0 and 1. Uh, if it is uh, very close to 0, we can say that uh, our model uh, do not explain at all the variation. And uh, if it is a value close to 1, which means approximately 100% of the variation is explained by the independent variable, this is the perfect model, but of course we every time we try to uh, to converge to to the value of one. But uh, even a value of R squared greater than, uh, for example, starting from 0 0.7 or somewhere, uh, in my opinion, it is a good value to to be used for uh, for prediction purposes. If if you don't have uh, other models, 
and uh, other linear models which for which we have the determination coefficient greater than this value so this this is a good value to to be used okay then uh, how you can uh, understand from the graphical view the situation of the r uh, r squared value so if you have from the scatter plot this one of this uh, both of these uh, two views you can um, predict that uh, the coefficient of determination can be approximately one. And uh, in other situation, for example, here or here, you can predict the value of the uh, determination coefficient to be from zero to one. And uh, of course, the coefficient of co uh, determination is uh, related with the correlation coefficient, if you, if you observe here. OK. Here, for example, you have a value of the determination coefficient equal to zero because uh, your linear model um, the, the independent variable does not explain the um, variation of the dependent variable at all. And uh, OK, maybe we can have that five minutes break now because from this point and on, I'm going to, to show you some formulas. Maybe I will go very fast and uh, just to let you know that in each uh, occasion we have this formula which we, you can use, but of course, uh, the softwares have already all the functions uh, incorporated and you just put all the variables there and um, you obtain the results. So maybe we will focus on the interpretation of the results. OK, 